Thank you. You have really blessed us with your musical abilities, and we are grateful that uh, you are willing to share your talents with us. And you really blossomed and uh, really putting out a really adding to our services with your playing. I, I appreciate you very much. I really, really do. You know, speaking of musicians. You know, when I was when I was young, boy, I, I wanted to be a musician so bad. I, I wanted to be a piano player. I wanted to be a guitar player. I wanted to be a singer. I, I wanted wanted to be a whole lot of stuff. Only problem with that was number one, I didn't have any talent. Number two is I didn't have any want to. I just wanted to be. I didn't want to become. <laughs> so there's a big difference between being something and becoming something. Amen. You know, when we're kids, we, we have all kinds of daydreams, don't we? You know, we dream about being, you know, cowboys, and we dream about being princesses, and we dream about, you know, all kinds of, all kinds of good things. And, you know, we even go out and we buy ourselves a hat and we get the boots and we get the pretty long dresses and the pretty red slippers and you know we do all we we get all those external external items so that we can be whatever it is we want to be but we don't ever want to spend the time to become we we want to be we just want to wake up one morning and be and that's the way I was with with musical instruments I didn't, I didn't want to take the time and put in the effort and the practice and the learning and the more practicing and more practicing and studying and learning and more practicing and more practicing and studying and learning. I didn't ever want to become a musician. I wanted to be a musician. You know, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse 3 tells us, for the dream comes through much effort and the voice of the fool through many words. In other words, to attain our lofty visions, to, to have our big, big dreams, we're going to have to do a lot of work. It's going to take some sweat. It's going to take some effort. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some studying. But the fool, he just talks a good talk, but he don't ever walk the good walk. And you know, as Christians, a lot of us are the same way. A lot of us want to be a Christian. A lot of us want to be like Christ. But we don't want to spend the time to become like Christ. You know, and, and God's made it pretty simple and easy for us. He, It's easy to be be a Christian. We accept Christ through faith. We believe in Jesus Christ and we become a Christian. But to live that Christ-like life, to have to become like Christ, it's hard work and it takes a long time, doesn't it? And that's what we want to look at this morning. Are we a wannabe Christian? Or are we becoming like Christ each and every day? And our scriptures today is in Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 through 14. And, and the Apostle Paul kind of addresses this and uh, kind of gives us some insights. And we begin in verse 7. Uh, but whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that, is, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. 
that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus, our most gracious God in heaven. Lord God, I very humbly stand this morning and praise your holy name for who you are and for what you have done. Father God, I, I thank you today for the beautiful rains that you've sent to our dry parched land. And Father God, I pray that you will continue to send your rain. We are just in such a dire and desperate need. And Father, just to see your blessings pour out cheers our heart and blesses our spirit, Father God. And we just see you at work in our lives in so many ways. Father, I pray today that you will give me the words to say, show me what I need to be bringing out here that I may encourage your people to be more like you each and every day. Father, I pray that your spirit is present and that his power is working today and that our hearts and our minds will be open to your word. Father God, I pray that you'll use me as your vessel, as your conduit today to bring your word to your people. Father, I especially pray today for my brother David Gary just uh, be with him. Father, restore his health to him and help him to feel and know your presence and your love today. And I pray for my friend Gary Sisson and I pray that you'll heal his body. And Father, use this time for him to be still and to know that you are God. Lord, we love you today. We praise you. And we are excited about what you're going to do for us, through us, and with us. In your name I pray. Amen. 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 So what is the first thing that we see here? The, I guess the one thing that we have to begin with is we have to dream big, don't we? We need to have a big dream. Paul had a pretty big dream here. He said he wanted to be found in Christ. He wanted to be just like Jesus. Wow, that's that's a lofty goal. That's a big dream. That's a big vision, isn't it? Amen. You know, we think back to Joseph in, in the Old Testament. He had some pretty big lofty dreams, didn't he? it? You know, that his whole family was going to bow down before him. He had big dreams, big goals, and big visions. But Paul here is wanting to be like Christ. And you know, we are... We accept Christ. We, through faith, we believe in Christ and we have our salvation, but it's we have to grow from there. And it is a process that we must go through and we must become an imitator of Christ. We must become Christ-like. Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2 says, Be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us. See, our lives are to emulate the life of Christ. We are to become more and more like him. We are the Jesus that people can see because he is sitting at the right hand of the Father. We are his ambassadors here on earth. We are what people see. We are what people associate with Jesus. So our behavior, our character, our lifestyle needs to be just like Jesus. Now how many of you feel like you've got that accomplished? I don't hear no amens and I don't see no hands being raised. None of us have. 
We have to, it <laughs> takes time, doesn't it? It takes a lot of work. Uh, you know, we don't become that kind of person by putting on the right t-shirt, listening to the right radio station and going to the right conference and, you know, making sure we attend all of the right things, do we? It's not the external things that we put on that make us righteous, is it? It's our faith that has made us righteous. And it is our faith and our obedience to Christ and our following of Christ that draws people to Christ, isn't it? See, we've got to be changed from the inside out. It's not the outside that matters. Because if it is, most of us are not perfect on the outside, are we? How many of you think you're, <clears throat> anyway, we won't go into all of that. But you know, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. We have to become something new, something different than what we used to be. We are to be born again through Christ. And just like that brand new newborn baby, we've got to learn everything all over again. We do not have a baby and then just walk off and leave them. They need nurturing. They need teaching. They need training. They need schooling. They've got to learn, become strong. They've got to be fed. They, we have to do a lot of things for them. They, there's a process. You know, here Bailey's 18 years old and she's fixing to leave home for the first time, right? Going to move into her own little dorm room. You know, we've seen Brooke and Brittany do the same thing. Our granddaughter found moving out. 18 years to get to this point. Wow. Seems like an eternity and it seems like yesterday, doesn't it? But it takes time. It's a long process. And it's the same way with our Christian life. We have to dream big. We have to think of all the grand things that God can do through our life. We have to be like Joseph and see what he has in store for us out there, but we're not ready yet. We've got to work at it. We've got to become what he wants us to be. We have to become Christ-like. Nobody would say that that tiny little baby looks like a mature adult. But there is the high degree of probability and possibility that they can become an adult. And, you know, a reasonably responsible adult. <coughs> And we need to be the same way in our Christian life. We get saved and we accept Christ. And, you know, basically everything is handed to us, spoon-fed to us, and we have to grow. And we have to have those dreams and those visions. And we need to dream big or we'll never attain to them. But we, it takes time and it's a, it's a process. See, it takes work. You know, if I want to be a cowboy and, you know, which one of us boys, when we was little, didn't want to be a cowboy? Have the hat and the spurs and the boots and the shaps and the six-shooter on her side and the horse and, you know, go ride the range all day long and, you know, save the fair maiden from the, you know, desperados and, you know. Man, guys, anybody else but me? <laughs> Did, we all wanted to be, you know, Roy Rogers and Gene Autry and, you know, I mean, oh, man, that was... That was a dream. That was a vision that we all had. But you know, as I grew up, I began to realize if I want to be a cowboy, there's a lot of work involved in that, isn't there? I got to learn to ride a horse. I got to learn how to swing a rope. I need to study up on uh, ration formulations. I need to study up on pasture rotations. I need to study up on you know, artificial insemination. I need to study up on all the different breeds and I need to study different marketing scenarios and I need to figure out, you know, weather complications and marketing and, all, you know, all kinds of things that have to go in to being a rancher. And most of them are not fun things. There's a lot of, <clears throat> somebody's got to scoop out the barn on occasion, don't they? 
And, you know, there's, there's a lot of work involved in being that rancher. But it, to be a rancher, you must first become that rancher. And, you know, we want to do that, then our, we become focused on that. And we put aside all of these other things in life. You know, those, those trips to the beach and the mountain and all, all of those things don't matter anymore. The big house in town, the, the fancy cars, you know, Corvette does absolutely no good. I have learned trying to drive through a pasture. <laughs> it will not get there. And I learned to put all those things aside and I put my focus and my attention on solely learning everything I can learn about being the best rancher that I can be and the best cowboy that I can be and what kind of horse do I need to do different things with and, and what's the best kind of rope and how do you swing that rope and what do you use that rope for and when do you brand and how do you brand and when do you give shots and what do you give shots for and different, I mean, and I study it and I learn it and I just, you know, I become consumed by it. And that's the only thing I think about, and that's what I focus my life on. And I push aside everything else. And that's the way we need to become as a Christian. When we become a Christian, we've, we suddenly have this vision, this dream of becoming like Christ. And we see what the, what the image is that we are to become, and suddenly everything else becomes of no worth to us. And we push it aside and we begin to focus strictly on Christ and trying to copy Christ and be like Christ and do the Christ-like things that he has called us to do. We give up everything else. Those other things are not important. Those other things don't matter except how we can use them to emulate Christ and to serve Christ in our life. And we become more and more Christ-like each and every day. Those other things count as nothing in comparison to serving Christ. Anything that distracts us, anything that pulls us away from Christ, we need to get rid of it and push it aside. We need to hear his voice. We need to feel his sufferings. We need to experience the heartache that he has experienced. We need to live in his death and experience his death. Galatians 2, 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. See, our life just becomes about being a Christian. Our life becomes about following Christ, about being obedient to Christ. And it's a daily dying to ourself and the desires of our flesh. And we no longer live for the desires of our flesh. We live for the desires of Christ. We must go and we must do and we must be what Christ has called us to be. The things that once brought us great pleasure and great joy and you know really inspired us and we really sought after, suddenly they become of no importance to us because of the surpassing greatness of being like Christ. We all had somebody that we looked up to, John Wayne. Didn't we all want to be John Wayne? <laughs> Yeah, Pilgrim. He was rough. He was tough. But he always saved the, the girl and got the bad guy right, you know. We, we have the perfect image before us of who we are to emulate, who we are to be like, what we are to become. And that is in Christ Jesus. You know, when I become a cowboy, I'm going to have the hat. I'm going to have the spurs and the boots and the shafts. But they're going to be there for a reason and for a purpose and to accomplish a task. Not just because they look cool and because, you know, the girls think they look nice or anything like that. I've got them for, because I need them. They're necessary. And, you know, when we become Christ-like, when we become that 
image of Christ that we are to become, we're going to have a lot of those external trappings of Christianity, but not so that everybody can look at us and say, oh, what a great Christian you are. They're going to be there for a reason and for a purpose for us to use to further the kingdom of Christ. Whatever those things may be. See, as Christians, we will ex exhibit the ex external articles, but they're for a reason, not just for appearances. We will become the Christian that we're supposed to be, not just want to be the Christian that we want to be. We're going to work at becoming. And now, our salvation is not based on works, right? Because we've already been saved. We've already been accepted into Christ. But now we want to become just like him. And that becomes our goal in, our, in striving to become like him. The third part is it takes a long time. And we got to keep at it, y'all. You know, I've known JL for a while now. And I was I was talking to him here a couple of weeks ago, and you know, he'd been a mechanic for a long time, way too long, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, he told me something the other day that kind of struck me. He said, every job he does, he still learns a little something. Sometimes he learns a whole lot. But after all the years he's been doing, he, he knows more about mechanicing than most people will ever know. He knows stuff that they won't teach at diesel mechanic school, I'm almost positive, right? I've heard him mention <laughs> some things that they don't teach in diesel mechanic school. But he's still learning. He still has things to that surprise him, things that he has to work his way through, new things that he hadn't thought of. See, he hadn't learned it all yet. He knows a lot, but he don't know everything. You know, and Paul tells us the same thing here. Man, he's, he has suffered much. He has gone many places. He has led many souls to Christ. He has started new churches. He even had the opportunity to stand before Caesar and witness to him about Jesus Christ. But he still says, I haven't reached the pinnacle yet. I, I don't look at where I've been. I'm just looking at where I'm going. I'm focused on going forward. I'm focused at becoming more and more like Christ every day. And I am going to become just like Christ someday. And I don't let the distractions of this world get to me. I press on. See, we cannot quit. We cannot stop. It's an ongoing everyday process that will take us the rest of our life and we will only become like Christ when we join him in that eternal life that he has Amen. promised to us. We got to keep on keeping on. Amen. We can't stop. And it's not easy and there's many times that we want to stop, we want to quit and we want to just give up. But that's when we need our brothers and sisters in Christ to encourage us, to help us along, to to bolster us and to boost us. Amen. See, there are many wannabe Christians in our churches today. Oh, they, they show up, they wear the they wear the prettiest ties and they got the nicest, newest dresses, and they they sing the loudest and how you know they want all of the best music and the most modern music. And oh, they wave their hands and they shout hallelujah and sing glory, glory, and oh, you know, they just Oh, they really, really put on a big show. But Matthew 7, 22 and 23 says, Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles. And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. See, it's not about all of the things that we do. It's do we demonstrate Christ? Are we letting the light of Christ shine through us? Amen. When someone sees us, do they see the love of Christ in our life? Or do they just see some guy who's all talk and no action? Or 
as the cowboys like to say, all hat and no cattle. Are you walking the walk or are you just talking the talk? Do you just uh, want to be or are you striving diligently, faithfully, daily to become? You know, we have a, we have a problem and, and I, I don't guess it's any different than it's ever been, but our young people today, they all want to be something, but they don't want to put out the effort to become something. We had an ag teacher was uh, trying to teach ag class, teach kids to weld and, you know, use the cutting torch to do metal work and all these kinds of things. He had some students that, you know, wouldn't pay attention, wouldn't learn nothing, wouldn't do anything, wouldn't participate, wouldn't, wouldn't you know, touch it, wouldn't get their hands dirty. And he said, man, what are y'all going to do when y'all get out and try to get a job? Kid looked him right in the eye and says, oh, I'm not going to have to do this. I'm going to be a boss. <laughs> Bosses don't have to do it. <clears throat> So we got to, they, they have a misconception of what it's going to take to become what they want to become. Amen. See, as Christians, we have a, many Christians have a misconception. They think they get saved and boy, it's over and it's done and they're, they've reached the epitome, but that's not so. That's just the beginning. That's just the starting place. Amen. We must strive daily to become more like Christ. Amen. Don't be a wannabe. Diligently become what God has called you to be. See, most of those wannabes, they talk a lot, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to glorify themselves instead of glorify God. Amen. And if we truly want to emulate Christ, if we truly want to demonstrate the love of Christ to this world, we glorify God in anything and everything that we do. Amen. And the applause and the accolades of man are worthless. Let's become more like Christ today. You know, your life is hard, isn't it? Growing up is hard. Making decisions is hard. Following Christ is hard. It's difficult. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a conscious focus on him, on his word, studying his word, understanding his word. It takes a daily dying to ourselves to our fleshly desires and growing each and every day more and more like Christ. But we are to press on to that goal. I want you to examine yourself today. Stop and think about yourself. Are you a wannabe? Going through the motions, sharing the words, or are you truly becoming more and more like Christ each and every day? As I stop and I look at myself, I become concerned. Do I truly do what I do for the glory of God or do I do it for the praise of men? Do I share? Do I give? Do I, what? Am I truly becoming more like Christ each day? Yes, I am, but I'm not getting there very fast. I think each and every one of us, if we look at ourselves, are you becoming like Christ? Or are you going to be one of those that when you stand at the judgment seat, you hear, depart from me, I never knew you. Only you can answer that question. Only you know why you do what you do, how you do what you do, what your true dreams and visions are. But let's don't be one of me Christians. Let's become like Christ. Would you stand with me this morning? Our most gracious God, Father, I thank you today for the beauty of your word. I thank you for the power of your word to speak to my heart today, Lord. And Father, I pray that your word has spoken in a mighty and powerful way to someone's heart this morning and that their life is different 
for having been in your presence and heard your voice speak to them. Father, if there's anyone today that needs to come and just truly focus on you, get their life right with you, Father, I pray today that you'll give them the courage to step out and begin to follow you and be obedient to you and not be a wannabe, but become what you've called them to be. I ask all this in your name. Amen. 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 J.L. Leeds, if God is speaking, would you come this morning?